Hello, my name is Carl Constantine, and today we're going to take a look at the Pluto valve for water drop photography, so stay tuned. Hello, my name is Carl Constantine with Ion Photography. Welcome to my channel on macro photography where I like to make little things a big deal. If you're new to my channel, please click that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss a single video. If you are a returning visitor, thank you very much for coming back and joining me. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Please continue to like and comment on the videos for further content. Today I have planned to do a rather large topic on water drop collision photography. And the more I thought about it in terms of everything that would need to be done, uh, the more daunting that task became. Spoke with several people and a few people suggested to break the video down into smaller manageable chunks so that people can assimilate that information much more easily. So today is part one on how to do water drop collision photography using the Pluto valve system. We're going to take a look at an overall review of the Pluto valve and how it works. Next week, we'll take a look at the setup and actually shooting water drop collision images. And then finally, on week number three, we'll take a look at how to edit your water drops for publication to the web. The Pluto valve system actually consists of two different components. The first component is actually the Pluto trigger. You cannot actually operate the Pluto valve on its own. You need the trigger to interface with it. And it does th so through an interface cable and you interface the Pluto trigger with an app on your phone and where you can control multiple different functions of, uh, of the app. It has just a standard shutter release. You can do time lapse or HDR photography, star trails, video, timer. It also comes with um, a laser pointer, which when you point at uh, The one spot on the trigger here, uh, when uh, an item breaks that beam, it will trigger your camera. Very, very cool. It also detects lightning, infrared, the droplets, other auxiliary uh, stuff, sound, vibration, motion. There's so, so much that this little uh, trigger can do. It's actually pretty amazing. The device is actually very small, lightweight. It connects via Bluetooth to your phone, like we just said, uh, and there are several different interface ports on it. Uh, the middle port here is actually the charging port, so it's just a standard USB charger. You can plug it into a, a cell phone charging block to charge it, or your laptop computer, whichever you uh, like, uh, which means you don't have to replace batteries. Very, very handy. Uh, the second uh, port on here is the camera port. Uh, it will connect to the remote shutter release on your camera if you order the correct cable, which you can order when you order the trigger on the website. It also comes with a cable uh, by default, which will connect to your uh, speed lights through the PC port if your flash actually supports that function. Not all flashes do, so it's very important to take a look at the specs for your particular speed light. The third port on here uh, is the auxiliary port, and that is what is used to connect to the Pluto valve in this case, or some other tools that they uh, offer on their, their website. The bottom of the trigger actually has a hole here and an adapter, which you can use to uh, connect to the hot shoe on your camera, so you don't just have to have it hanging loose. The second part of the Pluto valve system is the actual valve itself. This is a very simple system. It consists of a plastic uh, tube. Liquid goes into the top and flows down here. The circuit board on this, one thing I don't like is the fact that this circuit board is exposed. Other uh, systems have this sealed up in some way, such as the MyOps. Uh, it ha is a completely enclosed unit, much like the trigger is itself. But it is very, very simple to use. Uh, there is a manual release here on the front, which when I turn it on here, hopefully you can actually hear that on the camera. 
and uh, which you can use to test out uh, your drops to make sure that your focus is set uh, and everything. The interface port here is what connects the via cable, which is just a standard uh, audio jack cable, 2.5 mil cable, uh, which connects to the Pluto trigger uh, through that port. There is a simple 12 volt battery uh, on the back, um, which is very easy to get to, uh, and seems to last a while in terms of uh, charge. There are a couple different 12 volt batteries that I found. Um, you want the thicker one. Uh, one is a little bit uh, thinner. Down here on the end is a brass nozzle, uh, which is good. Uh, some systems actually have a PVC plastic type nozzle, which uh, depending on who you listen to, isn't as good as a, as a black brass nozzle. And I've taken a look at many different reviews on many different uh, water drop systems on the internet, and a lot of people do recommend the brass nozzle. It seems to have a little bit finer control. Setup of this is actually very, very easy. When you order it, you can also order the uh, connecting arm, uh, which is very simple. It comes with its own clamp, which you usually can just hold on to there or any part of that system with an arm and a way to attach it either to a uh, tripod, light stand, or some other uh, connecting mechanism that you might have, as long as it stays stable. It is fairly strong. You can tie it very tight and it does move depending on how you want to make that attachment very, very easily. And there's a little ball on the end of this to make it move around pretty easily at that point. And I've got this in, in really tight, which is why it's kind of stiff to, uh, to move. Uh, and it comes with the USB charging cable. The cable that connects to your camera is a separate order, but when you put the order in, you get a list of cables that you can choose from for Canon, for Nikon, and I think a couple other camera systems. Uh, and sometimes some of the same cables will actually work on different cameras depending on, on how, you, uh, how things are configured. Uh, but while you order the cable separately, it actually comes as no additional charge. Using the Pluto valve is pretty straightforward. Um, one of the problems that I did have with it is if you use just straight water in here, occasionally when you trigger the valve, it actually starts to drain. It doesn't just do a couple drops or three drops or one drop, depending on how you have things configured. It will actually just start to leak uh, water and drain your tube actually very, very quickly, which is a little annoying when you're trying to get some uh, water droplets. According to the website, one way to fix that is to loosen this bolt here, which actually uh, controls the uh, relay that actually starts and stops the, the drops uh, inside. The other thing I found uh, when using this a little bit more is if you use a liquid that is a little bit thicker, either you put a small additive in it or you just use a different type of liquid that is thicker, um, that drainage problem seems to go away. Now if you use different liquids uh, in the valve, if you use uh, uh, latex paint or you uh, add uh, xanthan gum or some other thickening agent, uh, to your liquid to try and thicken it up. Eventually, you may have to uh, clean the valve. It is relatively straightforward to uh, take apart and put back together. Um, and in fact, I, I found another video uh, on doing that, which I will link to um, at the end. You can get some pretty amazing uh, drops with the Pluto valve system. Uh, it is not uh, difficult to use, but it does take a very long time, which we will see next week when we go into a little bit more detail on it. One reason I decided to go with the Pluto valve, quite frankly, is cost. Of the four systems I was taking a look at out there, it was the least expensive by about 20 or 30 dollars 
uh, compared to the Myops, which is its closest rival. Uh, the Splash Art 2, which is a very common uh, system to do water drop photography, is based out of the UK. And when I did the pound conversion to Canadian dollars, it was uh, almost four times the cost of the Pluto valve. The fourth system I was looking at was the MJKZZ, or ZZ, depending on where you are in the world, uh, system which is out of New York. This is a fancy system consisting of one to three valves and other accessories, depending on how you want to configure it, and quite frankly, how much money you want to spend. One configuration I was looking at was close to $1,000 US uh, for that system. So you have to be pretty dedicated uh, to water drop photography to want to use a system of that uh, expense. Um, if anyone with that company is uh, watching this channel, please get in touch with me. I would love to take a look and review your system. If money is a concern, fellow macro photographer Lee Hall out of the UK has an amazing video on his budget water drop setup, and you can view more on that by clicking this link right here. If you want to learn how to clean your Pluto valve, click this link right here. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, uh, like, share this video, and comment below. Until Remember, next week we're going to go through the setup and shooting of water drop images. Until then, be safe, and remember that in the Mac world, we make little things a big deal.